Hey, everybody. Everybody that's home, I appreciate y'all tuning in and these numbers on our channel are really, really growing. So I just want to extend a big thank you for that. It allows me to have this feeling and, and knowing that what we're doing is actually becoming valuable in the hearts and minds and spirits of a lot of people. So I really am grateful for that and I appreciate it. And today we're going to talk about holding ourselves accountable. All the things that we're talking about today and all the questions we're going to ask ourselves today is stuff we've been covering for the past several months. And so I want to kind of tie all of that back into, are we just listening to Kevin up here talking or during the week, are we putting these, pra are we like practicing what we're feeling, what we're thinking about? And I think it's important for us. And part of that is using the tools, the infinite God has given us and that's what we're going to do. We're going to hold ourselves accountable today. And I think we should. So in this presentation today, and I hope y'all stay with us because it's really, really good. What constant action do you perform every day to enhance your life, your relationships, in connection to the infinite? Like, how do you do it? What are you doing every single day? And what, how are we using the gifts that are all around us that we mostly just accept as life but don't think that they are actually true gifts? And we're going to ask ourselves a lot of these questions. So today, we're holding ourselves accountable. And it's really hard because we don't like to hold ourselves accountable. You know, we don't like to go through this our days and go, oh, well, I'm Andrew and I haven't really done anything positive. You know, Andrew doesn't like to do that. Nobody does. You know, Wayne doesn't want to be at the end of his day going, well, I really wasn't very productive. And so you know, he's not going to think about it. Most people don't. So we have to start holding ourselves accountable to get to the places that we want to be in life, whether it's spiritually, financially, with our relationships, with everything. We have to hold ourselves accountable. And today's questions are really about that. And we're touching on our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, just all of it. So let's pay attention today. What have each of you done today or any day? What is your ritualistic pattern in your life that you have connected to the infinite? Now, most of y'all have been here many times, and when I refer to the infinite, it is what resonates with me, it, uh, infinite universal energies, whatever, God, that's what we call it, but I really like infinite intelligence because that's how I view God. But how do we connect in our own way? We're all different. Like, what do you do every day? Do you even connect ever? Do you think you do? You just walk down the street and you're stressed out or you're driving in your road and you're driving down the road and going, God, I'd really like some help because I'm pissed off. I'd really like some help. I can't pay for this bill. I'd really like, you know, but is that really connected? You know what I mean? Just bitching and moaning and complaining is not connected to the infinite and having some gratitude. Because you can still breathe, right? You can still walk. I don't know. Everybody here can walk. We should be really thankful about that. You know, what have we done to connect to Mother Nature? Remember, I think it was last week or the week before, we are like, the earth is a little speck in the sky. If y'all remember that uh, slide? And if we were looking at ourselves from over here, we'd be this little dot. We'd be a part of the universe. We're a part of Mother Nature. We're a part of this energetic field. And there's no escaping it. Like, we're in it. We might start living our lives and getting bogged down and just think, oh, I'm just Wayne. I'm like this broader collection of connections and friendships. But that's not true. You know, we start to self-sabotage ourselves and, and isolate ourselves and think everybody's an ass. Or, you know, I mean, we, we all do that, right? But what do we do to connect to Mother Nature? Hopefully all of y'all and a bunch of y'all that are listening. What did I say? The third week in April, we're going to come out here and everybody who participates gets to give a haircut to all the trees and we get to have apples, peaches, and pears and food. Like that's connecting to nature. And I think that's very important. All three Abrahamic religions are big on that and I am too. And I think we should plant, we should talk to ourselves, we should take long walks, whether it's in a park, whether it's in the woods, and all of y'all are welcome that are watching to come out here and walk in the woods, meditate out here, have picnics with your family, whatever it is, and however you wish to connect in your own way. It's available. It's free. 
Close your eyes. <laughs> and uh, unless we need to have imaginations, right? How many of y'all use your imagination? Like, how many of you dream? Like, in this country, at, at least when I was growing up, and I think a bunch of y'all have this too. Oh, that guy, or that girl, their heads, are, their heads in the clouds. Oh, they're not, they're not grounded. They're like, they're thinking about every single thing we see in this room. Everything that we use in our daily life was because somebody was dreaming. Somebody was dreaming and they took the initiative to make it happen. Somebody learned how to dye shoes like Wayne's. So he can wear them, right? Somebody invented the zipper. So you could zip up your hoodie. Like all of these things that we're doing and used because somebody had their head in the cloud. And if our head isn't occasionally in the clouds, well, I think it's a waste. I think we should use our imaginations because it is a fantastic tool the infinite gave us. And why would we not? How many of us forgive ourselves? Ricky is extraordinarily good and probably without him knowing it, even though we kind of talk about this a lot because I see Ricky so much. We, we check each other a whole bunch. And, but I will forgive myself. Like when I start to get irritated with somebody and Ricky will call me out. Like Ricky has zero problem busting my ass whenever I'm in a funky mood. You know, I'm just stressed out. I've got a bunch of things going. And so I'm just serious. It's not that I'm in a bad mood. I'm just focused on whatever I'm doing. And Ricky's like, you know, hey, what's wrong with you? You know, and he'll cost me to smile. And then I will forgive myself after that. After Ricky walks out, I'm like, okay, Kevin, you just need to forgive yourself. You're always going to be falling off of the path to being a better person. So you always have to forgive yourself. All right, it's okay. It's okay. You're not perfect. You're a human being. So just take that step. You started walking over here to be an ass. Now walk back over there and just have and start walking. Like, it's not that difficult. But we make it difficult when we start getting irritated at ourselves. Like, we just start compounding it. You're like, oh, God, I said I was never going to drink again. Now I'll just have another drink. You know, oh. You know, and then all of a sudden you just, maybe just stop. Say, okay, all right, I screwed up. Um, it's okay. I'm human. I forgive myself. Let's go. Let's go be better. Let's go be better every day. Let's just do that. And what have we done with this body? Do you hear me? This is our only thing. This is what we walk around with, housing our spirit. Our personalities, our soul. Like, are we stretching? Or are we like just doing some squats? I mean, well, you don't have to have a gym membership. All you gotta do is do some knee bands, you know, let's just get after it. You know, let's just go. It's not hard. Do you take a do y'all just grab your beautiful wife and baby, let's go walk. Just take a stroll. Exercise doesn't mean you just need to go out there and put on all your sweat shoes, I mean, your sweat clothes, and just go jogging for three hours. No. Just look at her. I love you. Let's just go take a scroll. Let's do it. it. It's important. It is important. Because, you know, if we don't have good health, what do we have? How are you going to love? How are you going to be romantic? How are you going to really meditate in those moments where all you can think about is how much pain you're in because you know, you've screwed up your body. we got to take care of it. I love this. Like we all have some kind of wisdom that would be really beneficial to somebody else. So when that other person is receptive, do you pass on gently some knowledge to them? And I don't mean to know it all that has to tell everybody everything. Like that's the most annoying crap ever, and we all know that. But if somebody's receptive, like they want to do something and you know how to do it, and you tell them, because a lot of people are like, I don't care, I don't know how to share. You know, I know how to do it, and this little kid who may, not, may or may not listen, it's really, like that's really rude. You know, we're not, we're not advancing our lives and the life of others if we're not. And then how, this is even bigger, are you listening? Are you willing to accept somebody else's solid knowledge and information? Like, are you willing to listen? Most people are not, 
able to listen. They're not. It's annoying. It's very annoying. All right, what is this uh, thing? You know, we got all these friends. Me and Dean are, uh, I always use Dean as this because me and Dean text and talk to each other all the time. We have a list of people, all of y'all. I would say almost all of y'all I stay in contact with. Pretty, pretty regular. It's, I don't know, three, ten of y'all is like almost every day. And then I got a bunch of messages from y'all. I've been, uh, for the last couple of years, I've been making a list of who I need to occasionally just touch. Like, hey, how you doing? You know, like Andrew has taught me, asking somebody, not just, hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you really doing? And when I got all these acquaintances, and they're, we're so well acquainted that most people would consider that friends, and it would be rude of me to not use this bodily gift in my mind and all these little tools to make a list, to call, to text, to send a message. Hey man, just thinking about you. I want to say hi. How have we been doing that? We've talked about that quite a bit lately. What else have you done to maintain the most important relationships? Like, you know, how often do you call your mom if she's still alive? How often do you reach out to your dad? Your brothers, your sisters. I mean, except the ones that you really don't get along with and you try. But, you know, I'm not talking about those cases. I'm talking about, you know, you have reasonable relationships with the people that are closest to you. What are you doing to strengthen that? Like, what if, you know, hey, yeah, I'll take that invitation. I will go to dinner with you. Instead of, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, you know, and then we do something else and we forget about it. You know, we asked Andrew to dinner with us the other night. Andrew could have easily said, you know, I've been working all day and I'm tired and I don't feel like it. You know, I love y'all. I'll see you Sunday. I just don't feel like hanging out with y'all. I'll see you with y'all. I'll screw y'all. You know, he could have easily been that way. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people go, well, I'm kind of tired. I love feel awkward. Now, Ricky is really good at that. Ricky's really good at saying, mm, nah. Yeah, so I don't ask Ricky to go to dinner and stuff much anymore because I always know he's going to say no. <laughs> but should he say yes sometimes, I'd have to say, yeah, he should. Because how do you strengthen and maintain relationships with friends and family if you don't spend a little bit of extra time with them out of the middle? It's important. This goes back to listening. Do you listen? Like, Start paying attention to yourself. When somebody else is talking, do you feel like you're so damn important that you have, when whatever you're saying, ha <laughs> I got to interrupt and talk over you and be loud. Whatever I'm saying is more important than what you're talking about. That's just rude and being an ass. Ricky. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, but Ricky's been real good. Ricky's been catching himself. He's like, oh, sorry, I didn't run. Like those are big steps for each of us. You know, whenever we catch that, like that's big. Like that's Ricky, Ricky being a big man. Like that's a manly thing to do. To say, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I realize I just interrupted you. Sorry. How about this? How about if we ask ourselves when we're doing something? You know, like working on a rent house, working on uh, sweeping, working on some mundane task that we find annoying. We can either be that person that's always bitching about it. Oh, I hate sweeping. Sweeping is so stupid. This is so beneath me. Or you can just be happy as hell. Like, look at what I just did. Man, look how clean this is right now. You know, everything is a perspective a perspective you tell yourself. You know, I hear these two guys back here a lot talking about how much they hate being an electrician. I don't know if it's being an electrician or who the boss was or whatever. But if you tell yourself, I can't stand it every day, well, guess what? You're going to can't stand it. Or you can say, man, this is really cool. How I'm making this family going to I'm, I'm going to, I'm putting this light here and these little kids are going to turn it on and see their family. And, you know, instead of just starting to change your perspective, all you're thinking is, man, nah, you, know, you can't wait to get out. How about this? We've talked about this a lot lately. You know, we're using our time wisely. What are you doing with your time? It's the only thing you've got. It's the only thing we have. 
I mean, you may not have money today, or maybe you have a lot of money, but you can always get money if you take the time to do the things to get money. Can. I've done it countless times. What are we doing in our neighborhoods? Like, what are we doing to enhance beauty around us? Like, do, do we see trash on our street and go pick it up? Do we get together with our neighbors to have a community garden? Do we even know our neighbors? People living in these apartments, they don't even talk to each other. You see the people carrying their groceries up the stairs. Nobody asks if I can even help. And if you did ask, they're so shocked by it and so threatened, they don't want you near their front door to even help them. Because that's what we've created in this society, and it's weird. Like, if I did not know you, and you had a bag of groceries walking in, and it looked like you had a whole bunch more stuff in your car, I was like, damn it, let me go help. And then you'd look at me like, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, no. No, where is my gun? Isn't this an open carry in Texas? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's the same state of affairs. Besides our jobs, what are we doing to know the financial world around us? What are we doing? I was just talking to Andrew, showing Andrew some charts uh, over dinner about the national debt. Andrew really didn't know how bad it really was or how bad the value of the dollar is really for. He didn't have much of a concept. Of it. It's really a problem for the, all of us collectively. Like, really, really bad. So are we improving our lives? Are we improving our financial situation when everyone's like, oh, crap, I can't pay for new tires? Like, oh, God. You know, most people in the country don't have $500 for an emergency. Like, that is insane. Like, like, truly, that's, like, a problem. So what are you doing? Do you just think, oh, well, I just get a job. I just get a job. I get a job. Hmm. Well, you might want to think of something else instead of just that. What do you do to practice your thoughts? To practice elevating yourself? Because we all find ourselves going, man, this is tough. I'm having a tough day. Life is crumbling down around me. How do you get yourself back? Well, hopefully, you surround yourself with a lot of good people. Hopefully, whenever I'm feeling like crap, all of a sudden I get a random text from me. Hey, dude, what are you doing? You know, like, that always makes me smile, even when I'm busy. It's just great. So what do you do? What do you do? What are you doing to learn something new every day? How are you holding yourself accountable? Are you watching instructive learning podcasts? Are you learning how to create a new business, how to sell a thing, how to do whatever it is? Reading. Are you doing anything? What are you doing to expand your consciousness? And how would you rate yourself on this journey towards self-awareness? Like, do you suck? Are you like, awesome? Are you somewhere in the middle and you just need a little nudge, a little kick in the ass, and like, well, I need to go see Kevin today. I'm sure he's gonna nudge my ass right on into self-awareness. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I would like to believe that we are each of us getting better and better and better at knowing ourselves. Have we made anybody feel loved today? Have you made anybody feel loved today? Now, Andrew makes me feel loved because I take a little stroll down there. Andrew stops, looks at me, just takes this, this a split second and kind of looks and just, come here. You know, just gives me that, that sweet Andrew look. Or before we started, I got a hug. Ricky, every time, it's almost never a time I don't hug Ricky before I start. Why? Because I love Ricky, and sometimes I can tell he needs it, and sometimes I know I need it from Ricky. So it's a very mutual, beneficial relationship that I can hug Ricky, and Ricky's not ever going to tell me no. He's not going to say, no, you faggot, get out of here. No, it's not going to happen. You know, that's it. it's not going to happen. He's going to love me. He's going to let me hug him. You know, do you have a uh, a checklist? Do we have a checklist of all of our questions, all of the things that we got to do, all of these things that we've been talking about for months? How do we hold ourselves accountable every day? How do we make ourselves accountable? Like when you're feeling antsy, when you're feeling like you can't close your eyes and get into your own room. Like what are you doing? How are you holding yourself accountable? 
do you have a list? Do you look at it and go, okay, all right, I'm getting, I know I need to do something. And we're never going to be awesome and, and do the things that we want to do in this, you know, just like that overnight. Everything is a slow walk. And so we just got to take one step at a time. Every single thing. So if y'all don't have a checklist, I highly recommend us getting one. We should talk with our friends. We should have these conversations regularly. Because who else is going to help us hold ourselves accountable than the people that we surround ourselves with? So if we're surrounding ourselves with yahoos that don't want to, you know, they're just as happy as hell, not making any self-advancement. You know, that ain't going to help us out any, is it? No, we got to be around people that are going to help us do what is necessary to get on the path we want to be on. Whether spiritually, financially, you have better relationships, all of it, all of these slices of our life. All of them. So we got to be around them. We got to force ourselves to go hang around them, even when we don't want to. It's like, man, I do not want to be happy. That's Andrew's stupid, happy smile. Whatever, I don't feel like being happy today. You know? I mean, we've all felt that way. I don't want to go, oh, God, my buddy Matt's coming. I got to be so, oh, it's going to make me laugh. I don't feel like laughing. You know? I mean, do that. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. We gotta catch ourselves. And if this resonates with y'all, I hope you use it. And if you live anywhere around, come see us. We're here. We're welcoming. As long as you're nice, we're a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. We love y'all. Thank y'all. And you can find us on mysticsoftexas.com. Thanks.